story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a drama, horror and sci-fi film called Demonic. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Carly walks toward an abandoned building where she hears her mother calling out to her. Carly finds her mother Angela sitting at the edge of the bed and Angela throws an open lighter at the floor drenched in gas near Carly's feet. Then, the burning sensation and Angela's creepy smile wake Carly up from the nightmare. A few moments later, Carly gets ready to meet up with her best friend who recently came back to town, Sam, regardless of her disturbing dream. Then, after spending time with Sam, Carly goes home to turn in for the day, but receives a text from an old friend asking to catch up with her the next day, to which she reluctantly agrees. The following day, Martin informs Carly that a medical technology company called Therapol contacted him, hoping that he would agree to be part of their focus group. Martin agrees, not knowing that the company takes in actual hospital patients, and one of them is Angela, who is in a coma. So Martin realizes that Therapol contacted him to get in touch with Carly. Afterward, Carly is looking at old photos of her with Angela when Therapol calls her, informing her that they'd like for her to come in to discuss further the details of Angela's condition. Although she is hesitant at first, Carly eventually agrees. The next day, Carly arrives at Therapol and meets Michael, a physician, and Daniel, the lead researcher. Carly finds out that Angela has locked-in syndrome, a condition in which a person is fully aware of their surroundings, but cannot move due to complete paralysis of all voluntary muscles in the body. Unfortunately, Angela's condition resulted from a head injury from prison. Therapol is currently researching to create simulations that serve as alternate realities for comatose patients to determine their mental state better. However, Angela is different since she does not communicate with them, except when she asks to see Carly and Martin. So Therapol wants Carly to enter the simulation and determine whether their research is working by communicating with Angela. Carly agrees and is taken to a room to prepare her for the simulation. Carly enters Angela's room, where Daniel informs her that they will hear and see her during the simulation, but not vice versa. However, they can pull her out of the simulation if she wishes. During the simulation, Carly finds herself in her childhood home. Carly then finds Angela in her bedroom sitting at the edge of the bed with her back turned to the door, and she tells her mother that she only came to express how much she hates her. Breathless, Angela notifies Carly that she is aware of her hatred, but wants her to leave, not wanting to endanger her. In disbelief, Carly forces Angela to look at her, but Angela only begs her to go and never come back. Outside, Michael and Daniel pull Carly out of the simulation and interview her about the experience. Once the initial shock wears off, Carly relays that Angela seemed detached and crazy, but younger than her actual age. Michael informs Carly that they would like her to go into the simulation a second time, which Carly blatantly refuses. However, Michael points out that Carly must have many questions for Angela, and now she has a chance to ask them. That night, Carly has another nightmare, where she hears Angela calling out again from a distance. Then, as she gets closer, Carly sees a dead raven and a strange amulet made from its carcass. The following morning, Carly returns to Therapol and enters Angela's simulation again. Inside, Carly is back in her childhood home. When Carly enters Angela's room, the interior shows a tunnel. After further inspection, Carly finds out that the tunnel leads to a familiar abandoned building, and as she looks around, she sees Angela sitting not far from the tunnel. Carly then approaches Angela and asks her what she's doing in that place and why she asked for Martin and her. Angela reveals that she did not ask for them, but it did, and that place is where it draws power. Carly asks what it was, but Angela just tells her to leave. Suddenly, the simulation starts glitching, and Angela floats in the air, unconscious. Terrified, Carly begs to go, but to no avail. Carly tries exiting through the tunnel, only to find it missing, and while thinking of another way to escape, an eerie voice calls out to her from inside the building. So Carly approaches the building, where she finds Sam's body. As Carly attempts to help her friend, a tall creature with a raven's head slowly walks towards her. Shocked and scared, Carly puts some distance between herself and the creature, but it only lifts its right arm and traces it. Unexpectedly, Carly feels a tingling sensation on her right arm, only to see a deep cut forming. Carly then screams in horror, which forces her out of the simulation. Back in reality, Daniel gently helps Carly get her arm treated, making her angry since she doesn't know how she got it. So Michael and Daniel interview her again to understand better what happened in the simulation. Carly is livid and demands to know why they didn't pull her out if they can hear her. And while the men are apologetic about it, they too don't have answers. Michael asks Carly where the abandoned building was in the real world setting, and Carly anxiously recalls that Angela was a nurse and loved her job. 
One afternoon, Carly, Sam, and Martin were drinking, since Angela was at work at a sanatorium for tuberculosis, which is an hour away from their house. Angela was tasked to evaluate if the place could be reopened, and Carly suddenly got a sinking feeling that something had happened to her, and forced Martin to drive them there. In 1998, Carly and Martin arrived at the sanatorium, and found Angela's abandoned car. Then, they searched the area and found Angela unconscious in one of the buildings, and she had the same cut that Carly currently has. Upon getting Angela home, Carly says that her mother seemed comatose and wouldn't talk to her for weeks, and it only got worse from there. Carly found her cutting up the remains of a raven and setting aside its bones to form an amulet. Then one day, Carly got home and witnessed Angela being loaded into a squad car while in handcuffs, but not before smiling at her. Carly learned that Angela burned down the old-aged care home that she worked in before and killed 21 people. Angela also poisoned five people at a local church, including Carly's grandmother. And unfortunately, the whole town turned on Carly as well. Eventually, she vowed never to speak or see Angela again. Upset, Carly asks them to finish the interview, and the men finally allow her to leave. Outside the building, Carly anxiously calls Sam to check on her, and sighs in relief when she hears that she's doing fine. Carly then visits Martin after showering and redressing her wound, and tells him about what happened at the Therapol clinic. Carly asks Martin if he still remembers the sketches and notes he made, so Martin assures her that he does, saying that it all started after they found Angela. Martin would sleepwalk and find himself in the woods, and he'd write and sketch all the nightmares and terrors he had to show Carly. While recalling the past, Martin notices Carly's arm and asks what happened, so Carly explains that she got it from the simulation, and it was the same cut that Angela had. Confused, Carly asks Martin to show her the sketches. Martin takes Carly to an old cargo container, where she sees familiar sketches. One of the illustrations shows an amulet, while another shows the creature with a raven's head in the simulation, which is actually a demon. Martin believes they're dealing with demonic possession, and that the demon haunts and terrorizes one person and any close family members and friends. After researching, Martin learned that the sanatorium stands on a haunted land, where possessions and murders occurred. Martin says that the creation of the amulet is the first sign of infection, and he also believes that the Catholic Church has a unique black ops unit with hand-picked priests specializing in taking care of demons and possessions. He believes that Therapol is one of the many private hospitals and clinics that the Vatican bought, adding that he thinks the doctors there are priests who use technology to sniff out who's genuinely possessed. Then, Therapol will take the possessed to the original place of infection and perform an exorcism with the help of a holy lance. Martin turns to Carly and asks her if she's had any visions or hallucinations, because that's what a demon does to force a person to do its bidding. In denial to accept her situation, Carly storms off and drives home, while Martin desperately tries to stop her. Afterward, Carly arrives home and finds Sam sitting in her living room, waiting for her arrival. Carly turns Sam away, saying that she needs space to think and that if anything happens, she will contact her. That evening, as Carly gets ready for bed, she makes sure that all entryways are locked, then gets a kitchen knife to put on her nightstand. Then, in the middle of the night, Carly gets up upon hearing someone pounding on the door. Feeling anxious, Carly checks to see who it is, only to see Sam checking up on her out of worry. Moments later, Carly and Sam are sitting in the living room drinking fresh tea, when Sam insists on showing a trick to Carly, telling her not to be scared and to look for her in the woods if she can't find her. Sam stands then turns around to put on a raven-headed mask, and as the lights flicker, Sam's body starts contorting. Carly runs to her room as Sam's contorted body moves toward her, locking the door and sitting in front of the nightstand. Moments later, the pounding on Carly's bedroom door lessens, and the demon with a raven's head walks out of her closet. Carly then screams in terror, which eventually wakes her up from the nightmare. Carly stumbles out of bed, grabs the knife in the process, and points it toward the closet door. Worried, she quickly tries contacting Sam, only for her call to go to voicemail. Meanwhile, Michael and Daniel observe her, feeling sorry that the demon is now obsessed with her. Daniel wants to take her in to offer protection, but Michael knows that it's futile, since the demon is hell-bent on getting her and will find her anywhere. Michael then informs another team to prepare Angela to head to the sanatorium, and as he goes to his locker and starts putting on his uniform, a cross is seen etched on his back. On the other hand, Carly runs to her car with a knife, phone, and keys in hand, and then drives to Sam's house. Carly arrives at Sam's home, only to find it abandoned, and the doors are wide open. Distraught, Carly calls 911, only to be informed by a cop that since there are no signs of forced entry, they won't be able to consider Sam a missing person unless 48 hours have passed. Desperate, Carly goes to Martin's place to ask for his help. 
Carly says that Sam is missing, and that she had a nightmare where Sam told her where to find her if she went missing. Martin then tells Carly that it used to happen to him, and that Sam must be trying to tell her where she is. Worried, Carly tries going to her car to look for Sam, but Martin stops her, saying it's the demon's way of luring her in. Carly insists that she needs to find Sam despite the danger, so Martin ends up going with her. Soon, Martin and Carly reach the woods and find Sam's abandoned car. Moments later, they see Sam sitting on a tree stump, shaking with fear saying she saw herself burning alive. While Carly and Martin help Sam in the car, they find out that Angela was taken to the sanatorium by some men. Carly then instructs Martin to take Sam home while she goes to the sanatorium, but Martin refuses, saying he will join her. Sam is left in the car at the sanatorium as Carly and Martin explore the area. Then, Carly and Martin find dead bodies and firearms burning in a pile and items used for exorcism. While Martin and Carly try to find out what happened, they see Daniel cuffing up blood in one parked vehicle. Carly approaches and asks him where Angela is, so Daniel replies that they always take the possessed to the place of infection and use the simulation to draw the demon out. They took all the necessary precautions, but the demon jumped from Angela into Michael, allowing it to be free. Daniel then hands the Holy Lands to Carly, saying that it's the only thing that will kill the demon. After that, Daniel activates the simulation, saying that entering it will be the only way to get Angela out. Carly and Martin follow the cables to the basement of the sanatorium, and Carly puts on the cap and enters the simulation while Martin stands guard. In the simulation, Carly finds herself in an unfamiliar house. Meanwhile, Martin repeatedly shoots a dark figure that slowly approaches him. Moments later, Carly sees Angela sitting upside down, looking better than before. Carly tries to persuade Angela to go back to the real world with her, but Angela declines, saying that despite all her failed dreams for them, she's already at peace, and Carly should go out to live her life. Eventually, Angela's form disintegrates as the simulation breaks up, indicating that she has passed away, forcing Carly out. Carly observes her surroundings and finds a blood trail leading outside, while Martin is nowhere to be found. She then drops and breaks the flashlight as she goes up the stairs, so she returns to Daniel's vehicle and takes his night vision goggles. Looking around, Carly breaks down after seeing Martin's car burning with Sam's corpse hanging from the window. Suddenly, Carly hears Martin's muffled screams from a building, so she takes the lance and steals herself to find her friend. Carly finds Martin tied up with his shirt serving as a gag, and there are symbols carved in his body. Martin tells Carly to go because it's a trap that the demon has set for her. And soon enough, the demon in Michael's body approaches and tells him that he will come back in Carly's body and burn him. Meanwhile, Carly enters one of the buildings, where she soon fights with the demon. Carly stabs the demon with a lance before it holds her against the wall, and it isn't long before it collapses and exits Michael's body. Unfortunately, the demon goes into Carly, so she crawls out of the building as she fights with it for control. Carly eventually wins by stabbing herself with a lance, forcing the demon out and killing it. After some time, Martin visits Carly in the hospital as she recovers from her injuries. Then, once she's discharged, Carly visits Angela's grave with a positive outlook on life. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.